problem. Hey, welcome back to Great Day Live. A lot happening here. Mark Lampkin's here for the entire hour, so you know it's a party. It is, always. Right? I love always it. Always a party. You know, in addition to kind of like talking about all the fun things we've talked about today and catching up, it's great that you've gotten a lot of um, questions from viewers, have. other people that have seen you on air. I have some questions for you, too. So first up, the big one that we've both heard a lot about is that that housing market, it's so crazy. And Number I feel one like question I get right now. Mark, it's getting ready to change, though, right? Like, what advice, what are you seeing and then what advice would you give to people maybe looking to sell or buy right now? The last three months, Claudia, this market has honestly changed. Yeah. And it's literally, we have went from about 800 houses on inventory to 1,300. So it's it's no longer, it's still a seller's market, but they're not getting 20 and 30, $40,000 over, over offering. Ah. It's starting to change a little bit. You've got a little bit more, but interest rate, uh, four straight week mortgage applications are falling. So this has given buyers a little bit of edge. Yeah. FOMO, F-O-M-O. FOMO. Just, you know, um, literally, people right now, should I buy, should I buy? Fear on missing out. Fear if you don't, on missing yeah, out. Yeah, so oh. don't, that's a new word in the real estate world. Look at you. Don't settle for the house right now. Mm. But if you love the house and it's a little bit more expensive, listen, for every 1% mm -hmm. interest rate rise on your mortgage rate, it increases your payment 15%. It's a big deal. So if you pay 5 or 10% more for a house, but you plan on staying the there changer. and you love it, you do it. But you've got a little bit more edge on buying because more inventory, mortgage rates going up. Mm -hmm. That light at the end of the tunnel is no longer a train, right? <laughs> right. And so you've got and a little bit more. And rates have gone up significant. I mean, they're creeping up. Yeah, they went from three and a quarter to five to five and a half. Fed's moving six to eight more times this year. Mm -hmm. They can go to six, six and a quarter. You think it'll go up even more? I think yeah. we're I think we're looking at six percent mortgage rates. But listen. Back in the mid 90s when I bought my first house, I thought I was getting a seal at eight and a half percent. Isn't that right? crazy to look back on that now? So five and a half percent. Now we want is one and bad. we got spoiled with one and two percent. But don't no. settle. I know the inventory is low, but FOMO, mm. fear of missing out. Don't settle. Yeah. But if you found a place you love, it's okay to spend a little extra if you're going to stay there to lock these mortgage rates in. Right. Because I think these rates are going up. I and if you stay there, you'll, you'll, you'll make okay. that back. I feel like, though, there's so much anxiety over, you know, gas prices are crazy. Grocery yes. prices, like everything, everything costs just a lot to live. And, and then the interest rates, then the housing situation. Do you feel like we're anywhere near that 2007, 2008 where the housing market just kind of blew up? And do you feel uh, like we're inching towards that or could we be like heading towards a, we're not. Like a minor recession? I'm so glad you asked that question. If you think about 2007, eight, that housing crisis was financially engineered yeah. and it was more of a banking crisis and putting those mortgages together. No jobs, no verification, right? no anything. But you can get a million dollar house this and is here different. you go. Yeah. This, this really is different. It's, it's supply and demand and look what it costs to buy a house. The, it's literally, it used to be 100 to $125 a square foot. Builders mm -hmm. are telling me now it's 175 to 200 to even a two and a quarter. So it costs more to build a house now. So these prices, they may rise a little bit because of supply and demand, but they are not, if you're waiting for a crash like 2007, eight, so. you are not going to get that in Louisville, Kentucky. So if you can get a decent buy in a place you love and lock that mortgage rate in right now, do it. Mm -hmm. But I had a realtor yesterday at Barinos tell me literally, Mark, I had an open house, and for the first time in six months, I had two people instead of 20 people show up. So it's, well, guess it, what? he said That's it's the seller's market. That That's should right. be normal. It, we're normalizing the market, but to your point, you asked the best question of all. Yeah. This is not 2007 and okay. eight. If you're waiting for that 30, 40% crash, it's not going to happen. It's good news. Find a house you like, buy it. Uh, one more question I want to get in here. This one's from my mom. Yeah. So, uh, Love your look, mom. I know. Uh, so, this is insurance, and I know a lot of people face this. So, if you're in your 70s and your insurance rates, your, your term insurance plan is getting ready to expire, do you buy another term insurance plan, which is what, 15, 20 years or something right. like that, which are expensive as you age, or do you flip it to a whole? Or do you do something like just invest the money instead? The lot, I mean, she's just looking at all those things. Such that a what is the best? What is the best use of money as you age? Do you just buy these massive insurance plans? Is it okay for and she's me? In great, she's in great health. Is it too. okay for me to share your mother's age? Yeah. Well, yeah. I just did. So right. She's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be on me. All right. At set, most insurance companies now, 70 is a cutoff for term. So mm -hmm. you're going to have to go to annual, which is extremely expensive at 76. She, she most likely won't be able to afford yeah. it or shouldn't want to afford it. So and listen, if you don't have any assets, if you just have a lot of debts, 
and there's not really an estate, mm -hmm. why do you need insurance other at all other than final burial expenses, right? And you can get that very Cover cheap. Cover what you need. Yeah. It, at 76, if you have some debts, if you have some, and you want to do final expenses, and you have assets that you want to leave, I did it this. I, I called this morning just for your mother. Oh, look at that. A hundred thousand dollar universal life policy costs about four hundred and ninety dollars a month, and if you look at 76 on normal life expectancy, yeah, at forty eight hundred dollars a year, you'll get a hundred thousand tax free. That's a great IRR return That's on your investment. Yeah. So for the right situation, it makes sense but at 76 term does not make sense and you need to seek out a professional. And you can also AARP, mm -hmm. they've got great 25 to $50,000 permanent policies, no medical inspections and you can write and Perfect. they're very, very reasonable. All right, Mark, appreciate it. We want to remind everybody, if you're interested in getting more information or scheduling your first visit with Mark Lampkin, because as you can see, he knows a lot about a lot, a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, head on over to LampkinWealth.com or give him a call at 690-6764.